start to win with them and then you can get them to respect you and follow and that's very important if you want to be a leader, leadership ladder that you're comfortable with your peers seeing you as a leader next after you've learned to lead yourself and you've learned to lead your peers the next thing is to learn to lead upwards now most of you some of you may say but how do i lead my boss is my boss or she's my boss well here we go first and foremost you will earn your boss's respect and you will earn your boss's followership or you start to influence your boss if first and foremost you are prepared any time you take their time. So when they know that you won't waste their time, you will start respecting you and respecting your time. What does that mean? It means if you know you're going to spend one minute with your boss, spend 10 minutes outside preparing for that one minute. So that when you meet them, you make value of their time. Two, do your own job well, always deliver and lead yourself well. If you lead yourself well, if you deliver on your job well, if you use your time very effectively, then you can make room for helping your boss achieve the results that they need to achieve. But if you're not doing your own job well, how are you gonna help them? If you're not leading yourself well, how are you going to lead them? Thirdly, you need to be a problem solver, which means anytime you find a problem and you need to approach your boss, approach him with many potential solutions. Otherwise, don't approach him with a problem. Four, learn to lighten your leader's load, which means what? whatever they are carrying, whatever burden you're carrying, you should be able to figure it out, comprehend it, and learn to lighten it. They will love you for that. And then fifth, but most importantly, take ownership of your leader's goals and vision. Now, when we talk about ownership, and there's this overbed model I usually use to teach ownership, it means not being in denial of what the problems are, not giving excuses, not blaming somebody else when you make mistakes, but owning up, taking responsibility, being accountable, and doing not just what you need to do, but knowing what needs to be done and ensuring that it's done, period. All right? And so that's very important when it comes to taking ownership. Leading down, downwards, I'm sure most of us know about that. That's when you already have people who are following you. Now, if you've been able to lead your boss, lead your peers, lead yourself, you naturally will have a lot of people who are following you. So how do you deal with the people who are following you? First and foremost, you need not to get on your high horses. You need to learn to listen. You don't know it all. And always remember that you don't know it all. Always remember that not to be on your high horses. Always remember that you've not arrived. There's still a process. So listen. And there's something I call LOL, not laugh out loud, no. For leaders, it's listen, observe, and learn. Listen keenly, observe deeply, and learn, learn, learn. Be a go-to player. Be somebody that they can always go to to know that they can find solutions. Have integrity, which means say what you mean and mean what you say. Don't be double-sided. Don't be trying to be sneaky. Speak up, be honest. You need to earn trust. Trust. Tell the truth. Make sure that you show competence. Make sure you're dependable. And finally, always make sure that you're looking out for the team and asking yourself, how can I give them value? Now that we've talked about the four, which is leading yourself, leading your peers, leading up and leading down, let's talk about the three key things that totally rope you out into the full-fledged seven dimensions. The fifth one is transformational leadership. To become a transformational leadership, first and foremost, a transformational leader, you need to first and foremost decide that you want to transform the people around you the world around you, the situation around you. And to do that, you need to choose to lead the required change. You need to become a disruptor if that need be. And you need to what pre-contemplate on what needs to be done. Once you do that, the next thing is you need to bring out contemplation among your team so they know that we need a change and we are ready to do it. Then you need to bring about determination by getting them to determine that we will make this change. 
We've contemplated about it. We realized that we need it. Now we're ready to make that change. Okay. But just these three is not enough. You need to take action to make that change happen. Once you take action, then you do what? You make sure that you take steps to maintain that change going through. And then comes termination. Transformation is about ensuring that things around you change for the better. There has to be shift in the way you engage. There has to be a shift in the way you lead. There has to be a shift in the things that you're doing. Every one of you here, if you become a leader by leading yourself, leading your peers, leading your supervisors, leading the followers, but you do not transform the people around you, what you're doing is not sustainable. And so the next step after you become an effective leader is to learn to be a transformational leader that's transforming the people around them. I dare say that if you read the books of Nkrumah, you can tell that he was one of the most brilliant people ever. Brilliant guy. Brilliant guy, way before his time. He was a visionary leader. But the issue is, maybe he didn't transform enough people around him. And so when he was gone, there was a huge pitfall. Transformation is key. It's important. And you know, as a leader, sometimes when you are visionary, you can see a vision a lot of people can't see. It can be a pretty lonely place. Actually, we just released a song called Lonely Place that talks about this. Okay? So for some of the Toastmasters I work with or for, for people like Ignatius and a number of other mentees that I have, they will tell you or they keep, they'll tell you sometimes that, hey, where my mind is or the things that I see or the vision I see, hey, you're still trying to get it, right? And that happens to you as a leader. But it's important that you learn to take your time to transform those around you so they can also see it. Otherwise, they cannot push that vision when you're gone. And trust me, we will all go at some point. Now, after you've transformed, you also want to make sure that you have other leaders that can take the mantle when you're not there. So that's what we call multiplication multiplying of yourself. How do you multiply yourself? First and foremost, you need to be an example that people want to be like. So live the ideals that you're putting out. Live the ideals that you're talking about. Be the example that you want to see. Then learn to mentor others and let them watch what you do. I don't know how many of you have mentors and how many of you are mentoring people, but it's one of the key things to multiplying yourself. You need to be a mentor then let those you're mentoring learn what you're doing and observe you do it, okay? Now, once they are learning you do it, teach them and stoke the fire within them, coach them, push them, attract the talent within them, show them what makes them better, push them to be the best version of themselves. Then let them learn to do it on their own without you. Sometimes you need to pull back and let them do what they need to do. And then finally what? Let them teach others to do the same. All right? And then finally, the generational leadership. This is where you're building your leadership to go beyond your generation. So when you're dead, the leadership or the brunt of your leadership keeps going on. So how do you do that? First and foremost, you need to apply the rules of multiplication. You need to create models that can easily be replicated. You need to create content that will exist beyond you. You need to reach out to the next generation. You need to anticipate the world of tomorrow and you need to constantly learn and pull without holding back. In Toastmasters, when I joined the Ghana Toastmasters 10 years ago, or when I joined Toastmasters in Korea, I learned what I could. I had mentors. I learned from them very deeply. I came to Ghana, we just had one club. And straight away, I envisioned an organization with multiple clubs, multiple people. The club that we were in had about 20 people. It had a lot of people passing through, about 20 active members. And so we got to work. 10 years down the line, we've built 26 clubs. We've built many leaders who are now running and building clubs on their own. We have over close to 600 people that are within the community and we're still growing. But that was not enough to ensure the legacy of tomorrow. So we went a step further and 
I got a team to set up what we call a gavel club. Now we have about three, which is made up of young people under 18, some as young as nine. When we're dead and gone, these people will be holding the Toastmasters platform together. We also started doing collaborations with organizations that are more visible, like Rotary. And now we're looking at even getting into the prisons. So this is how you build legacy. You think, what can happen or how do I ensure that this grows even after I'm dead and gone? That's how you build generational leadership. So when you're building generational leadership, first and foremost, you need to define what legacy means to you. For me, I'm an optimizer and an optimist. So I believe in an Africa that is liberated, an Africa that is free, an Africa that is self-dependent and self-reliant. I believe in an Africa that speaks for itself. And as such, for me, the definition of my legacy is to be able to realize that dream and to optimize the people around me to get to that channel. And so definition is key. Understanding your impact, understand that if I do the right things by ensuring that every person around me can communicate more effectively, lead more effectively, and has an understanding of how things work, impacting the people around them and connecting with them, then we will get somewhere and we'll be able to achieve it. So understanding your impact and visualizing it beyond you. Then the cornerstone is focusing on strengths and bringing everything together. So there was a time when, just like a lot of young people who I'm sure on the platform, I was doing everything from, you know, being a chairman here, running this, doing that, trying this, trying that. But I had to learn to focus it all to one brand. And so everything around me was cornered around me being a communicator. And now I've shifted that to me being a leader. And so everything I do connects with the simple fact that I'm a leader who's an optimist and an optimizer, period. My communication is to optimize people. My leadership is to optimize people. My impact I make is to optimize people because I believe in the positivity of an Africa on yielded, an Africa on fettered. So relentless optimizer and optimist. And then you inscribe and develop your pitch. I keep saying this pitch over and over again because this is who I am and these are the generals I want to build who will take Africa to the next level, who will ex live beyond my life lifetime to the next generation, to the next generation. And once you've sorted that out, live that legacy, let it be your brand, let it be your conversation day in and day out. But I want you to remember, leadership is not a destination, it's not a place. Leadership is a lifetime journey. And so it's something we're living, we're connected, and we're going through day in and day out. I wanted to keep this very short because I'd rather have it interactive. And so at this point, I'm going to take questions, comments, suggestions, or if I just confused you two, you can just let me know. Okay, I don't wanna to spend too much time waiting to hear if there are questions or not. So let me go ahead and pick some people. Shume C. Grace Asantua, how are you doing today? That is interesting from up from you. Grace, are you there? Or do you just turn the, the camera on and walk away? Okay, I see Zachary wanted to speak. Zachary, are you are you ready to ask a question? Zachary Mumini, or was that a mistake? What about Ibrahim Ali? I saw your camera on, so I'm guessing you're around. Hello. Yeah, Michael, go ahead. Um. Uh, we are very, we are very, um, we are very much grateful for such a wonderful presentation and very insightful. But the question is, I, I can see you recording this um, whole thing. Some of us joined late, and how can we get the recording version of this um, studies or lesson lecture? 
Yes, Ignatius will be the best person to answer that question. Ignatius. Ignatius, are you there? Okay, hello. Yes, hello. Let me come in. Hello. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, on the question of where you can get on the question of where you can get the video, normally we have a YouTube uh, channel. But uh, when the video is ready, it will also be posted on our page, our WhatsApp page, where you can get the link to trace it to our YouTube channel and watch. Papa, Thank you. Can you hear? I'm you can hear. Hi, Papa. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Abdul Rahman was asking the question. Abdul uh, was responding to a question that we actually wanted to respond to. Somebody asked the question that can they get the recording? Yes, okay. So someone also is asking here how can one improve influence capacity? Yeah, so Papa, someone is asking. Yeah, I referred them to a book called Influence by Robert, Dr. Robert Cialdini. Robert Cialdini talks about the six principles of influence. The first of being consistent. People tend to be influenced by something that is consistent with what they believe or they know. So a lot of times when you approach people with something that they've already said yes to or that they are consistent with, they tend to be influenced by it. If you're also consistent in your giving, they tend to be influenced by it. So as a leader, it's important that you're consistent in your behavior, you're consistent in the way you're engaging. You also approach the market that you're dealing with with something that they are consistent with. That's how you build influence. Secondly, the second principle is likability. People tend to be influenced by people that they like. What are some of the natural ways for people to like people? First and foremost, people like it when people validate them. People like it when people give them value. People like it when people support them or reinforce them. People like it when people are honest with them. And so when these things happen and you get them to like you, and, and I'll suggest that you read the book by Dale Carnegie, How to Influence People and Make Friends, right? When you get people to like you, they tend to be easily influenced by you. Then authority. People tend to be influenced by authority figures. Authority figures can either be people who have positions or people who are knowledgeable on a subject and are such an authority on the subject. So therefore, when you're dealing with people or connecting with people, it's usually a good idea to be an authority on that subject, to know that subject. If you're in a particular area, it's important for you to be a master in that area. When you're a master in that area, when you have authority of that area, people tend to be influenced by you. Then reciprocity. People generally want to give those who've given them. So when you give value, by the natural law of reciprocity, people feel like they need to give value back. And so you tend to influence them, right? And then people also are influenced when they see social proof. So for example, the reason Ignatius wrote my, uh, recited or shared my credentials was because he wanted to, you to see in other areas or other organizations in which I've been successful. And when you see that success, you're more likely to want to listen to what I have to offer you because you see that I've been successful in that same area and other areas. So social proof is important. People tend to believe people who've proven the model that you're sharing. And then finally, scarcity, demand and supply. If you're not offering something unique or scarce, people generally take you for granted. And so you always need to be refining your skills such that it's different from the market, it stands out, it's scarce, and then people tend to what? Want to jump over them or trip over themselves trying to get a piece of you. And so you tend to influence them. And that's how people influence the market. So if you apply these six principles, you will generally be much more influential than you are today. Michael, your hands are up again. Yes, sir. I, it's just a follow-up question um, for Ignatius. He said um, we can find the video at uh, on, on YouTube and maybe WhatsApp, but some of us, the link was um, forwarded to us. So if he can explain or give the names that we can go uh, on social media and look for the um, their platforms will be happy. Yes, that will be that will be handled to you later. I'll drop a link for you to register to join GYLCD, Global Young Leaders and Career Development. 
And once you join, the link will be available to you. I hope that is fine, Michael. How are we going to join? Because I don't have any platform that I'm going yes. to follow the link. Yes. So once you, um, I'm dropping the link in the chat box now, so that right. you 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 fill the form. So once you fill, we would add you to a WhatsApp group, and aside the WhatsApp group, we'll be sharing information, the details on today's meeting actually, today's seminar, so that you visit and because we're recording it, so you visit and then listen to it papa i have a question fine. i'm grateful yes it's a pleasure yes, papa a lot of people are dropping questions here uh i think I'll, i have to allow their question to be answered before maybe so someone is saying he, i find myself in a company where the ceo is dictated always wants her plans executed and this makes it difficult to operate leadership role as a manager so this person is asking, what should he do in this instance where his CEO is dictated, but he wants to operate as a leader and execute the leadership roles effectively? How can he handle such a scenario? All right. So the CEO has been a dictator. What does he think he needs to do to the CEO? If somebody's giving you pressure, you don't like it, what do you do? Ignatius. But there are approaches to it. First, you, yes. So, in my opinion, I think you should approach the person and then have an honest conversation with him as to how you are able to function well and you know, leadership is about understanding, letting whoever you're serving understand how best you're serving him. And if he's not comfortable or he doesn't enjoy your style, probably he might have a better way. But if that way is not suiting your values, you should look at your value, the value with which your personal values and then the values of the company. If they are not aligned, then I think it's not the right environment for you as an individual and as a leader. Okay. Uh, that is actually a good answer, but it's beyond the scope of what we discussed. I was actually hoping that you would take it from what I discussed. So, guys, what was the third thing that we talked about? We said leading up, right? If uh, your CEO is giving you pressure, it means that what? It means you're not leading him because if you're leading him, you'll be able to control the narrative. So what are some of the steps we said you can do to lead them? Do you remember? We said, first and foremost, you need to lighten his load. Secondly, you need to take ownership of his vision. Thirdly, you need to ensure that what? That you're doing your job effectively well so that he can trust you to give you more. Fourthly, you need to engage with him very effectively and let him trust you. Now, let me ask you this. If your CEO is giving you pressure to do a certain job, which is overwhelming for you, then it means you don't understand what he's looking for in the first place. So you are moving, should I say, you're not moving as quickly as he wants you to move. But if you're thinking like you think you'll be thinking and you're anticipating what you'll be needing, then you'd be providing him a solution before he even provides you the problem. I don't know if I'm making sense. So instead of waiting for him to start barking at you and giving you pressure, you need to take time to anticipate what he's looking for and provide it for him before he even asks for it. I don't know if I'm making sense. And I've had bosses like that a lot. So actually, I'm actually speaking from experience. You need to turn the narrative around quick. Otherwise, it's very stressful. And the way to do that is understand this guy, what is his agenda? What does he want to achieve? And how do I help him achieve it so quickly that he will back off? Once you start to understand him, or because no matter how difficult a person is, if you take your time and try to understand them, they all want something. They all have a particular agenda. They all have a particular thing you're trying to achieve. And if you can figure that out, if you can figure out how to find their narrative and lead it, you'll be in a better position to lead them, influence them, and get them in check. But if you don't figure that out, especially if you're working against where they are working, they will always be on your case 
and always be sitting on you. So that is that is something that you need to really think about. I'm seeing a lot of questions. Please make me what? Please have uh, nope. Doesn't uh, I find myself in a company where the CEO is the teacher who always wants her plans executed. And this makes it difficult to approve leadership role as a manager. Yeah, absolutely. Now, if you want to, to push your plans, which you think are in conflict of the CEO's plans, then what you need to do is you need to be a very good communicator, which means you need to find a way to let the CEO see your plans as your plans. Because really, you come back, you come back here to your boss. If your boss wants one thing and you want another, I'm sorry, <laughs> it's not gonna happen, right? But the best way to deal with it is for you to make your plans look like her plans or find a way to sit it in her plans so she appreciates your plans as her plans and then you have her support and trust me there's a way around it i don't think we have enough time for me to go into the art but it's something that if you study them well the first thing is to study them well secondly understand what their needs are and what they want to achieve and you'll find a way to do that and once they see that your plans are their plans trust me it will be it would be like night and it'll be like they, they, they've changed they will be so supportive because they're they not really supporting you. They're supporting themselves. But because they think it's one and the same, they will support you. And I've seen it happen in my work in public service, in private sector, and, and, and across nonprofit organizations. Uh, ah, somebody says, have let them know questions. that by the worker. <laughs> yeah, what did you say? It seems a lot of people have several questions in this area because it's very interesting. I would love to have you on our leadership seminar. Sure, contact me later. Question, studying and understanding your boss is key. Absolutely, wow, I get it. So value and you reap. Absolutely, you get value. You see, we are too focused on us getting value. What we need to focus on is us giving value. When you give people value, you have them turning around your finger because everybody wants value. And you know, there are two types of people in this world, givers and takers. If you're taken, you're dependent, you're handicapped, you're vulnerable, and one day you're going to get in trouble. But if you're given, you have power. And that's the thing you need to understand about life. Uh, how do you know when it's time to back out as a leader and the follower? Ooh. Daniel Quay, I need you to redefine this question. I don't understand it very well. How do you need... I think, I think he's saying that, uh, so when do you know if it's time to leave an organization as a leader Oh, okay, Daniel, unmute yourself, please. Unmute yourself and. Hello. Hello. Hello, go ahead. You, Hi, that evening. Yes, and um, my question is, you see, um, sometimes there are instances as a leader, you've done all you can maybe for, let me see, a particular group or organization, or you're not getting as much value as you should. Like, how you know when it is time to, um, like when it's time out, or if it's actually, how would you know whether it's time out and how would you know how to come out? And also as a follower, you see sometimes um, we have instances where the person we thought to follow or the mentor is not actually who we thought the person was, or you're not really getting what you actually sought to get from the person. How do you know? How 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 do you come out of that situation, or how do you cut um quit that relation? That's my question. Daniel, are you a Ghanaian woman? Yes, please. <laughs> did you ever meet your grandmother? Yes, I did. What was your grandmother's relationship like with your grandfather? I, I don't know. I didn't meet my granddad. <laughs> oh, that's sad. What about your mom and your dad? What was their relationship yes. like? Yeah, uh, in terms of oh, their relationship. Who was the leader? My dad. Really? Was it because he was the one that was backing? No. So why do you say he was the leader? Uh, dad. Because his his decisions were the final scene. Final. Great. Were you close to your dad? Was I? Close to your dad. Close. Oh yes, yes, yes. Very close. So anything you want, your daddy gives it to you. Yes, please. So you weren't close to your mom? I am. You're close to your mom. Who are you closer to? My dad. You're closer to your dad. Ah, okay. That's why I say your dad is, is the leader. Anyway, the one thing that was very interesting about our grandmothers and, you know, the older ladies, they were never in the limelight. 
The fathers, the men were always in the limelight. The men were always the visible leaders. But for children who weren't so close with their fathers, they understood the power of their mothers. Because guess what? If the fathers left alone, wouldn't may, maybe may not have given them the things that they wanted. But the mothers always knew how to get those things for them. The mothers always knew how to protect the children. Do you know how? How? Because they were silently needed. Oh, leadership yeah. Influence. Leadership is not about whose bark is the loudest or who sits in the position. Leadership is about who has the greatest influence. Are you listening yeah. very carefully? Yes, so, I am. Do you, are there times when you can step down from the position of leadership? Absolutely. But are there times when you stop leading? No, you don't. You can lead from the front, you can lead from the side, or you can lead from behind. You don't yeah. stop leading, but you can stop being visible. Oh, you don't okay. stop leading, but you can excuse the position. You don't stop yeah. leading, but you position other people because you think they are more effective. Are you with me? Yeah. Yeah. You can also lead without necessarily confronting the big boss. You can lead by being influential from the position that you find yourself in. Once you understand that leadership is not position and there are two disconnected things, you can start to make the choice of leading and leading effectively. The problem is the world has led us to believe that we need those positions and those titles, which is why I used to call myself, I used to brand myself the leader without a title. Why? Because the titles don't make me define me and open doors for me. Okay. It's an understanding of leadership. Are you with me? Yes. So I hope I've answered your question. Yes, please. And the followership part too. Same thing. Same thing. The fact that you think your leader is not being effective is an opportunity for you to start lead. But it doesn't necessarily mean you have to confront him, jump him and say, hey, I'm taking over your position. When you're ready to lead and you make that choice to lead, you just start leading. You start leading by pulling things together. You start leading by supporting the person who's in front, but allowing other people to live by your influence, by gaining the respect of your colleagues. I'll recommend this book for you, The Five Levels of Leadership. It teaches the you five levels of leadership by John Maxwell. By, by John Maxwell. John Maxwell, okay. Yes. It teaches you how to start building leadership up the ranks or start developing leadership. And you'll find that there may be a figurehead, but everybody knows that you're the one leader. Okay. So leadership is a choice. Just make that choice and start to make things happen. Remember, you want to give value to the organization. Okay. Thank right. you, sir. You're very welcome. Now, I heard somebody say they want to ask a controversial question. Let me see. What do they say here? I think the pulpit is one of the major points of influence, but the influence is not really seen on the nation. Is there anything the church is doing wrong in terms of their leadership? And is there anything to be done to correct this? Well, I'll tell you what. At Toastmasters, there's something we're doing called the Leadership Dialogue Series. And part of the deliberations that we have every month is trying to figure out how to build a leadership culture in Ghana. Now, if you remember very carefully, I said, be the example, right? And when you be the example, then you start teaching others to be the example, and then you move on. One of the most influential people of all time, of all generations, we can agree, is Jesus Christ, which till today we can remember, right? But what was Jesus, what did Jesus do right? He was an example. He was a very strong example. And others followed that example. If every pastor was an example of what Jesus taught, if every pastor was an example of that leadership, if every pastor was an exemplary pastor that people would want to follow, the country will be different. Now, remember, I said, what do people do to decide to follow you? Can I trust you? Do you care about me? And can you get me where you need to, I need to get to? If people believe that all the people in the pulpits can do that, it will show in the country. If people believe that the pastors are living the examples that they want, it will show in the country. So long as everybody's following those pastors. Are you with me? So that, that it's, it's a lot more complicated than that. But the truth is, if everybody of influence was truly living and understood the responsibility that comes with that influence, there'll be a lot of things that are different. But let me not talk about the men on the pulpit. Let me talk about you. Let me talk about me. You are all potential leaders. And if you want to see a change, you can all make it happen. 
You don't have to worry about the pastors on the pulpit or anybody else. You can start leading today. You just make that choice. Lead yourself. Start leading your colleagues on this platform. Then learn to lead the people you report to. Learn to lead the people down. And you'd be surprised. Only a week ago, one of my former bosses called me and told me something he'd never told me before. He told me about how proud he was of me when we're in the public service and how he has mad me for making a decision and leaving when I left and the decisions that I used to take and how bold. Now, back then, I wasn't very popular for them. But after so long, he's called back. He's reflected. He's older. He's called me. He's saying this. So, you know, you have to be honest with yourself. You need to be bold about it. And you need to take the tenets of leadership and it will come with its rewards. It's tough, but it's a beautiful journey. Okay. Let me see who else is here. The five. Yes. Jesus Christ, my number one mentor. Thank you, Danielle. Uh, leadership by example. Great. I don't see any other questions. Ignatius, am I done? Yes. Um, hmm. Some questions have come to me privately, but I would, I would, I would read out one question and then we can wrap up. So, Papa, you... ...about mastery, personal development. In the case where one is multi-talented, what... To the person look out for in terms of yes, Papa. Say, say it again, please. You said in case somebody is multi-talented. In case yes, in case someone is multi-talented for in order to master because probably he's he's resourceful. And he provides value to whoever to find out as a leader. What should that person look out for? Well, uh, being multi-talented doesn't really have anything to do with leadership. Leadership is leadership, right? It's not about your talents. However, in building your brand, what you need to do is anchor those talents. I'm a writer, I'm a poet, I'm a communicator, I'm a musician. Well, what are the criteria in selecting a bit more talented? What is the criteria in selecting what? Sorry, you keep going in and out. Ignatius, you say, what is the criteria in doing what? In selecting a particular level to master as a leader ah. or a particular field to master. Ah, okay. So what are you passionate about? What are you, well, what, what is most aligned? So what are you passionate about? What are you doing well in? What is most aligned to your purpose? What are you likely to make the most impact on? on what are you likely to be able to use to give the most impact to the world? I think these are five questions that if you ask yourself should guide you in taking the best step. I'm a, I'm a tech guru. I love IT. I love coding. I love programming. I'm a very good analyst and it's something that I'm known to be a genius at. But at the end of the day, what gives the world most impact? My ability to communicate and to lead. And that's why I spend most of my time with that. So you need to figure out what gives you the most impact and what is tied to your purpose and what gives you the most and gives the community the most value. And you can concentrate on that or start with that and everything else can be additional. So I hope that answered your question. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Well and answered. I said the what's and the why's, yes. but then remember the why is the most important. Exactly, Simon Sinek. <laughs> so Papa, someone is asking again, is it true that leadership is a lonely journey? This from Daniel again. So is I, would, I would say that I would talk say that about a particular situation, right? Leadership has ups and downs, okay? But the place where leadership is most lonely, and that's why I made a song about it, is leadership is lonely when you clearly see. You see, and, and this is the beautiful thing about leadership. It gets to a certain point where it's like you're a prophet, or it's like you have the gift of prophecy. It's not that you have the gift of prophecy, it's just like you've learned. You see, leadership is a people business. Leadership is understanding people. And after a while, you start to see things that other people can't see. It's like you already know what's going to happen. It's like you already know the way your mother knew when you, you had a problem, what the issue was. You start to have foresight. You start to have insight. And when this happens, you start to see visions as clearly as if it's happening in front of you. Unfortunately, when others which are following you have not walked that path or do not have that level of understanding, 
they will not get it. And sometimes they need to trust you just to follow you or they need to just argue out with you or work against you. Now, the time when they don't trust you enough just to follow you because their disbelief is too strong and they are literally fighting or stepping on your cape when you're trying to do it for them, there's this frustrating moment where you feel like they're all against you, yet you're trying to help them or you're trying to lead them or you're trying to support them or you're trying to give them value. And at that place, you feel all alone. So at that moment, leadership is a very, very, very lonely place. But yours is to get out of that lonely place by finding a way to stop what is within them, connect your vision with what is within them, and get them to understand and believe and support or just trust you in taking them to where they need to get to. So you shouldn't be in that lonely place too long. But there are moments where it's lonely because you're alone, because you see it alone, because you visualize it alone, because you feel it alone, and they cannot connect or they cannot relate. And that is consistent for me in Toastmasters. Um, Ignatius will tell you that. I've learned to embrace the frustration. I've learned to connect. Because sometimes Ignatius will tell you what I'm trying to achieve. Most people think you're being too ambitious. Relax. It's not going to happen right now. Wait. But you see it right in front of you. You dream it. You feel it. You taste it. Right? So you feel like Moses standing on the, on the, on the mountain, seeing the promised land but not being able to taste it or not being able to feel it or not being able to get there. And sometimes you need to trust that somebody else later down the line, your legacy, generations further, will touch that promised land even if you don't. And that's okay. Because if the people around you are not ready to hit that promised land, you need to believe that there'll be a generation which will and they'll make it happen. And, and you just have to be happy and, and comfortable with that fact that it's lonely to know you will not reach that vision that you put out there. And I'm sure Nkrumah felt that way many times. Amazing, amazing. Papa, that reminds me of another question. Do you think Africa has a leadership problem or a followership problem? I can repeat the question. No, Do you, you think... No, you don't have to, because it's a question that I've, I've had since before I joined Toastmasters. Toastmasters was actually a solution to that particular question. Now, I've gone through the motions of thinking Africa has a leadership problem, and then Africa has a, lead, a followership problem. But now I can answer unequivocally, without a doubt, Africa has a leadership problem. The issue is what you are ca calling leadership is different from what I'm calling leadership. Africa has a leadership problem. And I actually had a quote I put on my status where I said, we have a crisis of leadership. We're all not leading well enough. Africa has a leadership problem, not just because the leaders that are leading the country or the politicians are failing. Africa has a leadership crisis problem because we all have not made the choice to lead. Africa has a leadership problem because the African community is not meant to be led by a few. The African community is meant to be a community. It's meant to be led layer by layer. Fathers are failing. Big brothers are failing. Big sisters are failing. Ibushia paying the clan people are failing. The chiefs are failing. Before you start thinking about the politicians. So yes, we have a leadership problem, but the leadership problem goes all the way down to the grassroots. Children need to learn to lead their siblings. Mothers need to learn to lead their children. Fathers need to learn to lead their families. The clan men need to learn to lead their people. Bosses need to learn to lead better at the workplace. Supervisors need to learn to lead and not just supervise or just manage. CEOs need to learn to lead better before the politicians come in and they also need to learn. If the people learn to learn and they understand the tenets of learning, leadership, and they connect and they lead well, you cannot just have just anybody leading the country. We will all learn to lead because we come from a cloth of a leadership culture. And that's what we need to be working towards, a culture of leadership on every level. So we have all failed. Me inclusive, you inclusive. We need to lead better. It's really that simple. Beautiful, beautiful. Papa, it seems a lot of people want to know more, but time is also not permitting us. 
Daniel was Daniel just stated that she would love to connect with you, and a, a lot of people who joined the call would love to connect with you. So Daniel. we would. Yes, Papa. I said they should join Toastmasters, Ignatius. <laughs> they will, they will. And, you know, there are some people who are not Ghanaians. There are people from other countries. At a point, um, Aminu and some, okay, Jessica Kawa. And some others are not in Ghana, but they can find the Toastmasters community wherever they are in their country. You know, Toastmasters is multinational and i think papa yes would would drop your social media so that your social media handle so that they can follow you as well and then connect you can send up my soundcloud music as well yes yes uh, <laughs> and guys you know aside Papa has been an advocate for leadership and communication. He has, it's a very, he has an amazing music he has released. I would drop the link on the on our pages. I will drop the the link on our pages for us to visit and. I can tell you, Papa Akis is multi-talented. He is living what he says. He's a true leader, a visionary leader, who, who, who defines that leadership skill within you. And it was a great honor to connect to him today. I hope you've picked your notes from what he has shared. And you're going to act on it because, you know, he said, he said that Africa has a leadership problem. So we shouldn't just let this seminar go waste. We have learned a lot from him and we need to actually live the example. Let us live the leadership example. Wow. Okay. Yes, Papa, Papa just dropped the SoundCloud. Great. You know, he has a music the lonely place and, and there, are, there are other beautiful things he's released. So kindly visit the link that has been dropped here and enjoy and enjoy. I'll drop Papake's social media handle. He's, he's on LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook, at Papa Ake. Let me drop it right away. Ladies and gentlemen, you can connect with him via the on Insta, Facebook, and you find him. He's, you know, the current division director and
you can join those masters details for you to join those masters. Yes, so Papa, people are saying, voila, is saying he's very grateful to be part of today's session. He has learned a lot. God bless you, Papa. And on behalf of Global Young Leaders and Career Development, I'd like to express my profound gratitude to you, Papa Akes, for taking up this beautiful time to share such wonderful insights with us. It's actually a billion dollar in which I know come in very priceless and we will take it up and actually work on them from every member of DYLCD. We say thank you very much. God richly bless you, Papa Akest. And we will lead by example. We will not just talk but walk the talk and redefine the perspectives of leadership in our respective sectors, as you have rightly taught us. It is a wonderful privilege. I must say that I have learned a lot, even though I keep learning. Today has been another icing on the cake, which I deem it a wonderful privilege. Thank you so much, Papa. And you know how we do it. You always blow in my mind. You always blow in the minds of people you meet. And I must say, you're a true gem. So, ladies and gentlemen. I wanted to hear Grace's voice. I don't think I heard her voice. I saw her voice. No, I, I think I think you hear Michael's voice. I just want to say thank you very much. And looking forward to have a nice relationship with you. We've been blessed. We've been blessed. We thank you very much. We are grateful. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you too, Michael. Papa, I think Michael Michael has left the... Um, Grace has... Grace is off the call now. But the people from Nigeria have, have also given their comments and they are grateful for this wonderful lesson shit. It, it's, it's, it's beautiful to have an experienced person like you share with us so we know what is actually on the ground. And Papa, thank you once again. You, you have no idea how grateful I am for this opportunity. So ladies and gentlemen, you aren't a member of Global Young Leaders and Career Development, I will drop a link for you to join, to fill the form and join. Once you register, you would be given the, you'll be able, you'll be able to join our WhatsApp platform and other relevant social media details will be, will be sent to you. So I'm dropping the link again for you to register and be a part of GYOCD. If you are not on our WhatsApp platform, probably you join through another channel. Maybe a friend sent you the link or something. So you can fill the form and we'll add you to our WhatsApp platform. We hold this every week. So next week we'll have another speaker to blow your minds like our speaker today did. So thank you all for joining. If you have any final comments for the speaker, you can drop it here while I engage a speaker for his final word. So if you have any final, just type something you want to tell the speaker, just type it while the speaker also shares his final words with us. So Papa, Papa, we'd like to have a fi your final word. In your final word to... My final words are, uh, God be with you. God bless you all. Remember, leadership makes all the difference. And that's all you really need. So Please, God, to I want to say is... Leave and change the world. I want to say to Papa is...
Thank you, Papa. Thank you, Papa. Michael, were you saying something? Okay, so Michael is saying we we look more we, we look forward to more of this opportunity. So Papa. <laughs> all right. Thank you all guys for joining. And it's been a wonderful time having you join this call. So tell a friend to tell another friend that GYOTV is helping individuals be enlightened to impact their society through trainings like this. We hope to have you join next week for another wonderful session. Once again, my name is Ignatius Abute, and it's been a pleasure serving you all. So we can sign out and interact. Maybe you're joining for the first time. Can you? Okay, thank you. Let me know. I see you, Daniel. I see you, Emmanuel, Jessica, Hola, Kofi, Agbozo. Yes. So thanks for joining and have a lovely evening. If it's afternoon in your country, have a lovely afternoon. And let's make Africa great. Let's make our community great. Let's make our society better. Thank you very much. Thanks, Ignatius. Thank you. It's a pleasure, sir. So those who want to join Toastmasters, I'll share, I'll share an invite or some links to the WhatsApp platform. Yes, Jabba Emmanuel. So kindly fill the form. Once you fill the form, we'll add you to the WhatsApp platform. So do want to fill the form. Thank you. Or I, I, you can reach out to me for more details. Emmanuel, uh, Jabba Emmanuel. So you can reach out to me. Just check your message. Okay, thank you, thank you all. Thank you all, thank you all. Daniel, I like your fire, keep it up. And Mr. Kofi, I told you, yes, keep it up. Thank you once again, and have a lovely evening. Hey, it seems Daniel doesn't want to leave. Oh. Hey, Daniel. <laughs> it seems Daniel doesn't, doesn't want to end the, 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 the call. <laughs> hello, Papa, hello. I think, yeah. Papa, I think Dan Daniel is really <laughs> interested in joining Toastmasters. You should join. What are you waiting for? Uh, <laughs> 
So, Daniel, are you join once you are part of the platform, we will add you. Don't worry. Okay, thank you. Hope you've registered though. For the form side, the link I sent to the form for the form. Um no, I'm going to register. So do register. Once you register, you will be invited to the WhatsApp platform and then okay. we'll update you with other information. Okay, thank you. Yeah, Papa. Yes, hey, Rachel. Oh, Rachel. Hmm. Rachel Thank you. Oh, Papa, me see. Oh, we found that though, Rachel. Hey, I texted you to find out if it's ended. Papa, thank oh. you so much. I, I'm traveling tomorrow in Tino packing me and a whole lot. And you decided to bring me when you are traveling, when you won't have time for me. Oh, I'm so oh, no, sorry. No, 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 Papa. Ignatius handled everything, and I, how everybody is saying the thing went well is smooth. I'm so happy. Sure. Papa, it's like the one, all of them want to join Toastmasters. We just got our 26th, 25th, and 26th club today. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I got, I got the notice. Yeah. Okay, so I think I'm, I'm, I'm off. Thank you so much again, once again. Okay. Uh, so okay, Ignatius, I'm making you host so that I think after I can end it for all. I think. Rachel, yeah, Rachel, what's up? Yeah, I'm saying that I'm making you host so that after after the discussion, probably you end it for everyone. Okay, okay. Okay. So I've I've done it. So I guess I'm leaving. Thank you so much. Okay. What do you think? Is that what? I think we can let Daniel join CS Relentless. <laughs> she should actually. I think she'll be a good fit. Yeah. We need, we need, we need blood like that. Good blood. Yeah. So Daniel, text me. I've, I've dropped my contact there. So text me. So we, we work on, we work on adding you to one of the Toastmasters platforms. Okay. So, Papa, thank you so much. Daniel, have a lovely evening. I, I, I can see you still want more, but time is not on our side. Time will permit us to go further. So what I would suggest is just meditate on what Papa shared already. So that the next time you, 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 you'll be ready for something extra. Papa, I think Daniel doesn't want to leave you. She, uh, <laughs> when it comes to Toastmasters, she'll get plenty, don't worry. Yes, she'll get plenty. Daniel Quay, yes, you get plenty, don't worry. Eh? Okay, so Daniel, do want to text me so that I, I get I get a contact for them. Connect. Yes, so we can sign off now. All right, Ignatius, talk to you soon. All right. Thanks. Bye. Bye.